Hi, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things leader related, related to leading yourself and leading other people. So uh, this was going back a few years. I had a good friend of mine, and I'm going to call him Lenny for the purpose of this, and uh, I haven't gotten his permission to share this story, but uh, a good friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a long time, uh, we reconnected. We, we got together for some lunch, and we were just catching up on what each other was doing, and he was telling me that he is doing uh, speaking, professional speaking, which is part of what I do now, which at that point, five years ago, maybe this was even seven years ago, I was just totally intrigued by it was like, wow, that's pretty cool. You go around to all different places in the country or the world and you get paid to get up on a stage and speak, which for many people would be the biggest fear of life. But uh, at that point, I was starting to get into doing some speaking and it just was really intriguing. So when my friend was telling me about this, I'm like, wow, man, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Like, and I was just peppering him with questions. I'm like, what do you talk about? What's it like? How do you market? How do you get yourself out there? And he had a sports background. He had some uh, management experience. Um, and he kind of took took a really cool angle and perspective of his, of his life and, and now is giving back uh, uh, in, a, in a real big way. So again, this is going back about maybe seven years. So uh, I got to the point, I asked him, so I said, well, what do you charge for your, your speeches? And uh, he said, I charge $500. And I'm like, you charge five hundred dollars for for what for? And he's like, for an hour, for an hour presentation. I see you charge five hundred bucks for an hour. I said, dude, you were totally undercharging. And his face was like, what? What are you talking about? I'm like, dude, you are absolutely putting yourself totally in the wrong space. Now, at that point, I had been hiring speakers to come into my companies and speak for many, many years. And the speaking circuit, you've got people at all ends of the spectrum, and it's really kind of a fascinating thing to understand what do they charge per hour for an hour keynote presentation. Well, some are uh, $500, some are $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000. When you get into the celebrity status, you're above 50,000, you might be at 100,000, past presidents are at 150 or $200,000 for an hour, literally. It's unbelievable, plus travel and expenses and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's it's an unbelievable industry. But uh, having experience with this, on the other side of hiring speakers, I thought my friend Lenny was totally underpricing himself. I'm like, dude, you should be like 10 times that easily. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm, I can't charge that. I said, Lenny, you should be charging $5,000 for an hour. I said, let me ask you something. Do you feel what you do really provides value? And I'm not just saying you think it. Do you know it? Do you really, really know? Now, I knew his background, so I knew and just know him well that Without a doubt, he provides a lot of value. If he talks to 100 people in an audience, I mean, he's going he's gonna to impact some lives. He's going to change some businesses, some trajectories, whatever. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. He said, yes, of course I do. I said, Lenny, I said, if you called me and you wanted to speak in one of my events, and I didn't know who you were, and you told me that your fee was $500, I wouldn't hire you. And it's nothing to do with the fee. The fee, that, I mean, that's, that's a bargain for a speaker. I said, but I wouldn't hire you because I would assume you suck. I literally would. And even five thousand bucks, I'm I would assume a ten thousand dollar speaker is better than a five thousand dollar speaker. Totally, and I know many of them on both ends, not the case. But this is a great example of self-worth, which is what I want to talk about today. How do you impact that? So uh, to continue the story, I, I talked to Lenny for a little bit. I said, listen, man, you he was intrigued by it. I said, listen, honestly, you need to up your fees because your value is perceived, unfortunately, good or bad, until somebody sees you, they naturally put you in a different category when they first hear your fee. They put you in a category in terms of your experience, your impact. If you're really that good, you wouldn't be charging 500 bucks. You'd be charging significantly more than that. I said, at least you should be doing 5,000. So I had not heard him speak firsthand. I ended up bringing him into my organization and we, uh, we landed on a fair price. It was, put it this way, it was above 500 bucks. Uh, and I wanted to make sure it was worth his time and this and that. But um, he did a great job. I mean, he, he spoke to my whole organization. Everybody across the board loved him. 
Uh, and it was really, really uh, a great keynote presentation. So I ended up referring him to some of my colleagues across the country who were also running organizations uh, similar to mine. And um, this was going back, maybe going fast forward a few months after he did the presentation at my place. And I had another one of my colleagues call me up and say, hey, uh, I, I'm calling because uh, your friend Lenny reached out to me. You had referred him. Uh, and uh, I just want to find out, you know, how, how was he? Like, you know, I know he spoke at your group. I said, let me tell you, he was awesome. He was really, really good. Got the group really energized, really good value, impactful. I'd love to have him back again, this and that. He said, really? He said, awesome. Okay, so he's definitely worth hiring. I said, yeah, of course. And and he said, so he's he's worth $5,000? And I just, a smile came on my face. I said, yep, he is worth 5,000 bucks. And, uh, and the guy hired him for $5,000, which was awesome. And I'm thinking, go Lenny, man. Awesome. Great job. So uh, in any event, it was such a cool story. And I just, I wanted to share that because all that had to do, all that, ha- that had to do with was a little bit of a change of self-perception and self-worth. It's really tough, right? Self-worth, I mean, just by definition, it's what you feel you are worth. You know, what you're worth in business to somebody else is what they're willing to pay for you. So if somebody was willing to pay Lenny $10,000 for a presentation, his worth is 10,000, according to that person. I mean, it's just an arbitrary number, right? But what's most important is what you think you are worth. which then raises the question, you know, how do you, how do you change that? Uh, I think it's one of the most important things in business without a doubt. I work with leaders, business leaders all the time. And one of the common things I hear them talking about is this, this, um, this fr- almost feeling of, of uh, fraud element in the sense that they're in this high, high position. They're running an organization, they're CEO but they don't feel they're deserving of being in that position. They feel like some, they're going to be found out almost. And it's, it's such a dangerous mentality, but it is unbelievably co- uh, common. So if you're in that situation, you're an executive, you're leading a large team, whatever, and you have that feeling, you're not alone. Let me tell you, uh, reach out to me. I'll talk to you about, I'll share you all the stories that I've heard and everything. I know where you're coming from. But you also have to realize you're in your situation for a reason. My friend Lenny, you're speaking on a stage for a reason. You have to realize you have something to offer. And the real question when it comes to business and you're, you're, you're somebody who might be, maybe you have the ability to charge on an hourly basis in your business. And I will say this. I think the whole concept of charging hourly is absolutely ridiculous. I think it's a horrible business practice, uh, in my opinion. Unless it's a business that's that it's a quick one hour, something like a keynote, uh, something like a, a a a therapy session, or something like that, where it's but for a business, an accountant, an attorney, a consultant, or whatnot to charge on an hourly basis, uh, I think it's a lose lose all the way around. Because the better that that I am, if I'm charging hourly, the better that I am the less time it's going to take me to do something and generate a certain result, which means that if I, the better I get, the more I'm penalized. I lose because I'm billing out less, right? Uh, And the only way, if, if I really do need to dedicate a lot of time to it, and more and more time to really do it the right way, then the business that my client loses because I'm having to build them a lot because I'm spending a lot of time on it. Just a lose lose. Better to charge per project or per assignment or whatever it is for the result and then leave it up to the person who's uh, yourself to put in the time and the effort that's needed to do to get the job done right. Uh, then you're paying for the, and then it's a win-win, right? It's a win-win on all sides. That's what you've got to be striving for all the time. But uh, back to the interesting question, if you were charging hourly, uh, what would you pay someone else to do what you do best? What do you think that, it, what would you pay someone else to do for you? for what you do best, if that makes sense. Um, and, and this is a really tough thing. If people have ever asked you, if you're in that situation, what is your hourly rate? I don't know. It's a 50 bucks. Is it a hundred bucks? Is it 500 bucks? Is it a thousand bucks an hour? Um, that's a, a real dilemma that I see businesses, uh, business people, uh, uh, have. 
So here's a couple of pieces of feedback. One is you have to be self-aware. You've got to understand what are you saying to yourself that's affecting your level of self-worth. My friend Lenny, what he was saying to himself is, ah, I can't, I can't price it that high because then there'll be some people that can't afford it. Yeah, exactly. I, I know you want to be, you want to help everybody and do as much as you can. But number one, you can't be on the road 200 days a year speaking at 200 different organizations. Uh, if you did that and we're doing $500 per organization per place, you'd be making $100,000 doing 200 presentations a year in 200 different spots. You'd be, you'd have no life and you'd be sick uh, and you'd have no marriage. Uh, doesn't work that way. If you're charging the right amount, you're speaking to the right audiences, then it takes you 20 presentations to do it at $5,000. Uh, and much different lifestyle, and then working on getting up to the next level, the next level, the next level. So you have to realize that, yeah, your market may not be everybody. You don't want to necessarily approach everybody with your skill set. You've got to aim at the right spot. Uh, even though you can help somebody, doesn't mean that you need to. And I'm not saying that being a giver is not uh, good, but from a business standpoint, uh, you can have the heart of a social worker, but you have to have the mind of a capitalist. If you have the heart and the mind of a social worker, then you will ultimately, nothing wrong with being a social worker, but that you cannot expect to run and be a very high uh, producing income generating business uh, without the balance of the heart of a social worker and the mind of a capitalist. So here's a couple things you can do. One is be aware of your self-talk. Understand what you're saying to yourself. If I'm saying to myself, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I'm worth that fee, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I can charge that because I don't think they'll pay. Snap out of that. Write what you're saying down to yourself and reframe it. Okay, I've talked about this in prior podcasts, but there's two ways to change your negative self-talk. One is to do a turnaround, which means looking at it from their perspective and uh, the client's perspective and say, okay, well, if I could, if I was in a business, let's say I was an accountant, and I, if I could save them uh, you know, $10,000 in taxes or provide $10,000 of value, why wouldn't I think it's fair to charge $2,000? Uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, okay, if I were in their situation, would I pay $2,000 to save $10,000? Of course, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I knew I was speaking to a group of 1,000 people, is it likely that at least a group of those people, maybe 50 people will leave that audience and take massive action that will generate huge results as a result of my presentation? Yes, What's that worth? That's going to be millions potentially of dollars of revenue. Uh, that's the way you got to be thinking about this. The second thing you can do is a dispute, which means my, I can dispute my negative self-talk. I can have facts that contradict my negative self-talk. Lenny could be saying, well, people don't pay $5,000 for a speaker for an hour. What? No way. Well, yeah, you, it doesn't take you long to figure that out. You can actually do the research and see. Speakers earn a lot of money uh, Do if they're great, if they're great at what they do. And Lenny is great at what he does. Uh, you can dispute that with facts that contradict your negative self-talk. Okay, Here's the second thing you've got to do if you want to build your self-worth. One is you've got to surround yourself with the right people. That is so critical. People that help you increase your own self-worth. It's great to be around people. I know I know people that uh, that are are givers. They They want to help everybody around them. And they do at the expense of their own well-being. You have only got a certain amount of space in your life. You've only got a certain amount of space in your brain and enough physical effort and time and mental and emotional energy to go around. If you constantly give it to everybody else, you will not have any left for yourself. And ultimately, the price that you pay is you will be empty. You won't have anything more to give. And I see people that run their lives like that, where they're constantly in give, give, give mode, which is, I, I admire that, I respect that, but I also know where that ultimately goes. Unless you take care of yourself and you surround yourself with people that allow you to take care of yourself and don't just keep pulling, pulling, pulling from you, then you will never get to a point of having ultimately high self-worth and health overall, okay? That's key. Uh, and surround yourself with people that also have high self-worths because that helps you. That rubs off on you. Don't say, when you're hanging out with people that have low self-worth, you have to assume if you've got you know eight friends around you, eight that have low self-worth and low self-esteem, you're going to be the ninth. 
You have to understand that. So there's no doubt about that uh, at all. Uh, here's the other thing you can do. Like Lenny, after that $5,000 speech, do you think his self-worth went up? Absolutely. You got it. I mean, it skyrocketed. And today he's charging, his whole business is transformed. It took that one gutsy move, that one time to throw out that higher fee. And maybe you don't go from 500 to 5,000, but maybe you go from 500 to 1,000. Uh, maybe you go from 1,000 to 1,500. Maybe you go from, if you're charging $50 an hour and you are doing that, maybe you go to 100. I know a, a business person who charges $200 an hour who should be charging 300 an hour. There's enough demand for her services. Uh, but she's reluctant to do it. And if she's listening, which I think she might be, she knows who I'm talking to. Uh, but ultimately, your self-worth is dictated by your success. When you go up and you have that success, you realize, wow, okay, I guess I am worth more than $500 in Lenny's case. Uh, take the, the risk, take, make a gutsy move, try it once, try it twice, try it three times, and you'll ultimately uh, be rewarded with that, with somebody who believes in you, in some cases, more than you believe in yourself, which is dangerous, but they put a higher value on you than you put on you. Uh, but ultimately that won't have, that will change as you see, and people are willing to, to pay that price for you. Uh, think about it like a painter. I think about being a painter, I, an artist that's actually selling his or her work. That's gotta be so tough. I mean, I'm just thinking, what do you price something at? I mean, I've seen the, I don't know anything about painting. I don't know anything about artwork. But I, I know if I went into a museum, you could tell me that painting is worth $30 million or $3,000. I wouldn't know the difference. I would have no idea. How does a painter price his or her own work? I mean, that's got to be unbelievably difficult. I have no idea. Uh, but if you told me that painting was worth $30 million, uh, and, and I didn't know any different, I would assume it's really great quality. Again, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what goes into being a painting worth $30 million, but I would assume it's just an absolute masterpiece because somebody put a price tag of $30 million on it. What does that mean? What if they m m slipped and put a price tag of $10 million on it and the three looked like a, ten, or like a one? Is it now $20 million less valuable? It's amazing how that works. There's so much subjectivity in 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 self-worth <laughs> it really is amazing the same way it is for pricing these arbitrary things out there uh so in any event those are some key things with self-worth i will tell you when you start to realize how and again the first thing the first step is to just think about where am i right now how would i value myself what is the worth i put on what i do and who i am and what i give and what i provide or what services i provide and then make the conscious decision to work on increasing that. It is easier than you think. It's not easy, but it's easier than you think. I am happy to help you with that. I have uh, lots of different ideas and thoughts and experiences with that. If you want, reach out to me directly. I am more than happy to talk to you about it. I think it's that important. I will spend time one-on-one -on -one with you. I know how important it is and how life-changing that is to increase your feeling of self-worth. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, it's been uh, a lot of, uh, it's fun topic and I love that story. Uh, Lenny, if I get his permission, I'll share with you his real name. Uh, some of you listening probably know who he is, but uh, in any event, uh, thank you for listening today. Keep your thoughts, your comments, your feedback and all that coming. Greatly appreciated. Like this, share it, uh, uh, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody. Bye.